Right. So you have been listening to questions posed by members of the committee, the three-member committee led by Justice George Kingsley Kumpson, who is a Court of Appeal judge. You had Simon Osemens, our Shanti Regional Minister. You had the uh, Brigadier General Joseph Afo, who is a Central Commander of the Ghana Armed Forces. You had Lieutenant Colonel Kwesi Wari Prep, uh, Pepra, who is Commander of the 4th Infantry Battalion. Then DCOP David Adjiman Adjim who is Deputy Ashanti Regional Commander. You had DSP Philip Hammond, District Police Commander at Ejira. Mohammed Sali Subamba is the last person we heard. He's the Municipal Chief Executive for Ejira, Sechua Dumasi. And then you had Dr. Mensah Manye, who is Medical Superintendent of Ejira Government Hospital. Now, there are three people who have been arrested over the murder of Kaka. The police issued a statement and told us about them, but they singled out one of them, who is his brother, uh, that he um, sort of is a potential murderer. But they are holding three. And then, as you heard the military uh, commanders, commander say, they have arrested some two people that is in the uh, rioting. Right, so we'll get to know later whether those two people are the ones who shot some of their own people when they were demonstrating or what exactly, because they have a strong suspicion. And uh, it's a theory that one of the members of the committee subscribes to, that the shooting could have come from the people themselves leading to the deaths. All right, so let's begin uh, with Dr. Randy Abe. I have no specific question to you. We deliberately played sufficiently to remind all of us what has that happened so far and the committee's work so far. What will be your commentary? <clears throat> well, uh, thanks, uh, Samson. I, I think that uh, it's uh, really unfortunate to see something that um, should not have happened, and um, I believe could have been um, avoided. And I think that uh, although they are related, this um, issue is in two parts. One has to do with the murder, and the other has to do with the routing leading to the, the clash. Now, with respect to the murder, I think that I would like to leave that with the, the security agencies you know, to unravel. I'm not sure that that is even the business of the committee, you know. But I'm kind of surprised that I keep hearing we picked intelligence, we had intelligence. Yet that kind of intelligence could not lead the authorities to put in measures to prevent the rioting and the clash. Because one of the benefits or key benefits of uh, intelligence is to avert or prevent um, something. So if we, we keep hearing that we picked intelligence, we had intelligence, what did we do with the intelligence? If you had intelligence that people were going to rout, I mean, you obviously should have put in place measures to prevent what occurred. You know, because even without the intelligence, so to speak, I mean, even common sense will tell you that if you look at the advocacy of the deceased and you look at the circumstances surrounding his death, common sense should even tell you that you should expect something like this. Because from the reports we've had, they went to bury him. And from the burial, obviously agitated because it's tried knowledge that the guy was murdered. So it's not as if he died of natural causes or he was involved in an accident. He was murdered. And so obviously, the guys would be enraged. And the intelligence should have told them that, look, they're going to bury the guy. And the thing with, with the, the, the Muslim burial is that it's, 
it's in the heat of the emotion and everything. It has to be done immediately. So unlike um, as where perhaps the thing will be the, the cops will be put in the morgue for weeks and sometimes months. And within that period, there could be a lot of healing and tapering down of emotions and all that. In their case, within 24 hours. So it's in the in the in the heat of the moment with the emotions high up and everything. And so you'd realize that from the barrier, we're told that they march straight to the police station to demand for answers with respect to what has happened to those who perpetrated that crime. And that is where everything started. And so my question is, those who picked the intelligence, what did they do with it? And why are people who said they picked intelligence and had intelligence uh, still remain in office? and still have the nerves to appear on TV and tell us all the manner of things that they are, they are, they are telling us. I think that um, I still wait for the committee to finish its work and see uh, what, they, <coughs> what they intend to speak about this. One other thing that worries me, Samson, is that, look, we've watched footages of this thing. For the life of me, I cannot appreciate how what we saw was beyond the capabilities of the police in the Ashanti region. Because if what we saw was actually beyond the capabilities of the police in the Ashanti region, then we have no police. To be honest with you, what is it that we saw? That we are saying that the police in the region could not deal with it. We had to call in the military to come and handle what we saw. You see, there's a certain level of flippancy with which Civilian authorities calling the military. You know, I can, the issue of the parliamentary invasion and all that. There's a certain level of flippancy with which civilian authorities bring in the military. And I think that is something that we ought to, to question. Now, in terms of the, the testimony before the commission, I would leave the commission to do their deduction, to determine what they want to place weight on and what they do not want to place uh, some weight on. However, I've been a bit disturbed with the, the line of questioning and some of the commentary from the members of the, the commission. And I think that they ought to watch it. I mean, I should think that by now, they should be watching a playback of, 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 of their, 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 their sessions. I mean, to ask themselves whether they are not even getting too carried away um, and all that. Because some of the line of questioning and some of the commentary, I think, uh, uh, are, not, are, not, are not that good. I listened to Erastus, you know, speak about his encounter with the committee and uh, the use of video footages that he provided. Why they decided to choose the one that had captions on and not the raw footages and decided to take him on on those things and all that is, 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 is an issue. And if you listen to him and the city uh, TV um, journalists as well, you realize that they are not even comfortable with the work of a committee and they suspect that perhaps the committee has a certain agenda. Worst of all is the report and of course the statement by the, the family of Kaka that they do not believe that looking at what the committee has done so far, the committee is actually interested in unraveling the truth. And for that reason, they will not be a part of it. I think that that will be a big blow. And I think that any assurances that can be um, given to them, I think it's not too late. The committee has asked for one week. I'm sure they'll be given the one week. But I think that any way that they can be assured, you know, to uh, come back, and, and assist the committee would be very, very good. I think that this committee finishing its work without their input would, would greatly <coughs> affect, affect okay. the committee. That would be so my comment. A number of quick questions right. to you, and I wish I can get very quick responses. Sure. You talk about the intelligence and what they did with it. Yes. And that intelligence is supposed to get them to prepare, to anticipate, and to pre prevent. Mm. Okay. What do you make of listening to the chiefs, the chief of the area, the chief and his elders, 
and the media also, as far as their preparation was concerned. The chief actually invited the youth leaders, the youth, that morning because he says, we suspected that there will be a riot. So he called them to calm them down and assure them that everything would be done. The media had an anticipation. That's why they were right there when everything happened. And that's how come you got the uh, things captured. What do you say? Compare, how do you compare that to the... No, that's, that's, actually, that's, <laughs> that's the reason why I said that. People who ought to be out of office, as we speak, are rather on TV, speaking to us about intelligence. Now, if the chiefs can gather intelligence and therefore try and take preemptive measures, the media can have intelligence then the intelligence agency itself tells us that it has the intelligence, but only acted on the intelligence when there was routing. I mean, this is an intelligent way of projecting intelligence failure. I mean, pardon my sarcasm. So what should they have done? They should have gone to guard the installations that they said they had intelligence would be... Look, we, we I, give you, I give you an example. Affected. When the, you were speaking on the Samson stick mm. about the, um, the demonstrators, the fix, fix the country guys and the attempts to demonstrate. Remember the last time they had wanted to demonstrate a place that they couldn't. And there was some suspicion or some people had written on social media to the effect that they would defy it. You saw what happened are the places where they intended to converge and some of the routes and all that. What was that for? So they had had intelligence. And this is how they employed the intelligence to deter. So that if anybody was so minded to defy the order, that was to deter you, to see what was in store for you. So that's how this is a typical example of how mm. intelligence so guarded is used to avert and deter. So you cannot say that even chiefs and media are acting on intelligence. And those who are responsible for intelligence and claim they had the intelligence, and have all the men and the equipment and every, the logistics to avert this, stood. When you say why some officers still remain in office and are talking to us, mm. who are you talking about and what do you expect should be happening to them? The, if the military guys have been affected, they would not be making the arrest that he's talking about that they have made of some two guys and they are handing them to the police. You see, the military, I'm not, I'm not sure that the military were those who had intelligence or were even involved in intelligence gathering. We are told that these are Operation Calm yes. uh, people. So they were Calm there. Um, I think that they deal with the headsmen and all those things in those areas. So they were minding their business, you know, but they, Regional minister has told us that he's in charge of RECSEC. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know the police and the intelligence agencies are the most decentralized in this country. So they are almost everywhere. And that is the only reason why they would have picked the intelligence. Why they did not act on the intelligence earlier to avert is where my issue is. Okay. Yeah. And you speak about, um, you know, civilians, you know, making instructions, quickly making instructions to, you know, uh, security authority and you refer to parliament. Uh, you remember that we have been told that no civilian authority instructed the army to intervene in the parliament uh, issue. But what are some of the lines of questioning and commentary that you are not happy about, specific? Well, for, for example, with the, one of the videos that you played, I heard one of the committee members say that um, he suggested to the military man that the protesters could have maimed themselves. In law, we call it leading questions. Yes. Mm. You know, and then the military man then, you know, agreed with that. And I thought that it was wrong. I thought that that was wrong. You don't do that. You know, that was he wrong. He agreed and then the questioner affirmed it. Yes. Reaffirmed yes. it. Yes. And mm. I thought that that line of questioning was wrong. And then... Is that not a possibility? <coughs> Well, that's the fact that the medical doctor says the gunshots, mm -hmm. the guns were fired at the backs mm -hmm. 
-hmm. of the people. Mm -hmm. Does that rule out the fact that the people themselves, somebody shot amongst them? I don't say, I, I will not say that it rules it out, but my point is that I'm struggling to find the basis for the question by the committee member. That's just the point I'm making. Okay. You know, and then if when Erastos appeared before them, the issue of fix the country, the guy being described, I mean, the strenuous effort that were put in in the questioning to sort of, you know, flag the media for having done something inappropriate. I mean, I sit back and I didn't get that. I didn't get what they were trying to drive at. The and question why was actually asked whether the video he was showing was authentic and not doctored. Yeah, but what's they, wrong they, with that? That's probing. That's what the <laughs> committee should do. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But when Erasto says that I provided you with the rashes, mm -hmm. and I provided you with the broadcast, and you choose to show the broadcast and question me on the broadcast, and the public does not know that I've provided you with the raw footages, mm -hmm. what is the impression that you're creating to the public? Okay, thank you. Um, Kuku, in the same way, <coughs> having watched from beginning to the end, what's your commentary? Um. Well, I will begin from family operate. <clears throat> I do not know this, whether they were, there was an ex formal invitation extended to them or not. I do not know. If you know, you can uh, supply me with that information. In the letter. I don't yeah, get I'm picking, it. I'm bringing the, the letter, letter out extension. to be sure if they said... In the letter for the extension. For extension. I think they. They didn't mention they, specifically no, yeah. that family. They said families. Yes. You know, were yes. being invited. They, they listed a number of persons to appear and groups to appear yeah. as the basis for the extension. Yeah, but was the if, yeah, if you family read that listed? Families of the deceased. Okay, it's listed. let's let's, yeah, let's, let's deceased. continue because you are you asking see? a question. Yeah. Um, uh, he's asking a question to any of us. Uh, does anybody know if they were? specifically invited, necessitating the letter that they wrote, saying that they couldn't make themselves available? You see, why am I asking this question? This. It's simple. Okay, somebody has some uh, answer to that. Yes, uh, Oliver. Uh, I, as, as I understand now, the family of Kaka even meet, have been invited to see the chiefs over this letter and the, under the understanding that the chiefs want to compel them to, to attend. Uh, the hearing. Persuade so, them to yeah, attend or compare. Persuade them to attend because yesterday they, well, yesterday they had tried to do that already while the family were, were in Kumasi uh, talking to press and, and to lawyers, I understand. And they had summoned the the mother of Kaka there and now they're inviting other persons in the family and spokesmen. So I do know that considerable effort is being brought on to bear on them to, if you prefer the language, persuade them to attend. Uh, so that's that's definitely where this is coming from because those persuasions have been have been ongoing. All right, thank you very much for that insight. Well, yes, that's go. not an answer to my question. You know that. I'm talking of whether the committee formally extended an invitation to the Kaka family to cooperate with the committee. I do not know that, and I asked that question for good reasons. The response given by Oliver does not answer my line of inquiry. But is it a giving? that they would, have, they would invite the family? I cannot tell. I don't want to speculate. I know why I'm doing this. Look, okay. uh, we've all, and Randy even uh, hinted at it, the Kaka murder is distinct to really, uh, uh, from the Routes. events that occurred post the murder. And the police, as we speak, are already dealing with the Kaka murder as a criminal issue. Three suspects in court relative to that. I'm not sure that the criminal action, uh, investigative process that the police have initiated have been subsumed into the committee's work. I'm not sure about that. I don't think it will even sound proper. The committee's work is focused on events post the murder. I understand that there is a certain linkage in terms of the human factor, the emotions, the tensions, and the barrier, all those things. But we're looking at the committee of inquiry with these terms of reference. I am asking whether they sent a formal invitation to them. Now listen to this. If you read the letter, 
and this this letter uh, interestingly i don't see a date it's dated yeah. thursday 8th of july 2021 it's after the signature the date is after yes the signature. it's 8th july right so kaka had long died yes and the committee had begun its work that's right now paragraph eight they said that as we understand the scope of the committee's terms of reference however nebulous does not relate to the circumstances that led to Kaka's murder or the circumstances that led to his burial. Rather, it concerns directly the circumstances that led to the deployment of the military to intimidate and indiscriminately shoot at the community that was grieving a loved one and still trying to come to terms with the circumstances and motivations for his murder. In this connection, we, the mother, wife, children, siblings, and extended family of Kaka are least competent to assist the committee perform that mandate. This right. is their response. And to a large extent, the sentiments here are actually accurate. Mm. That if the focus of the committee is to investigate the circumstances that led to the uh, death of the two other gentlemen and the deployment of the military and all those circumstances, then truly they are not competent to give any evidence. Whatever yeah. they give, its value would not be as critical as one would expect. Actually, the paragraphs before the six and seven, you get them emphasize the fact that the police are already doing a criminal process. Thank you. So bringing it to the committee. That is why I asked the question if they yeah. were formally invited. I would be surprised if the committee at this stage extend an invitation to them to, to come and participate in this inquiry okay. relative to its terms of reference and the focus. That is why I'm asking that question. All right. it could, they could come in sometimes, it depends on what you lawyers say, probative value and things of it. They could be brought in tail end and all that, but they are not the focus. So why it has become an issue now, for me, it's unwarranted. I don't see why it should be an issue. They should be cooperating with the police to deal with the criminal investigations that the police are undertaking or the criminal prosecution. Yeah. That's where- They say, they say uh, going to the committee could potentially prejudice the ongoing <sighs> criminal investigations. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the line. I was drawing that line of the extension. And that's where the focus should be if we are talking of the murder. Now, the other issue is who was Kaka? What was he? Why was he killed? Who killed him? And where and all that? You see, whether it's a fixed the country activist or economic uh, freedom fighters, uh, league and all that, you see a statement here. And I won't over elaborate on it because I don't think it's a substantive point. Mm. This statement, I don't know who, where it's coming from. This uh, That's the economic fighters league. That's their... Uh... Yes, but they sign as we are all caca fixed the country and all that. Uh, fixed country, we have been told, is not a group that has membership. That's their sign. Yeah. Uh, but it is a movement or activism. I, I appreciate that right. uh, principle. So, yeah. But you see, some statements in this, the content of this, a content analysis, will show that there was an attempt to suggest that the motive was political. And it was due to his activity, act activism, and things that led to his murder. That is premature and prejudicial and unsustainable relative to evidence available. Okay, sorry. It I was a this job. Is, this is not uh, economic fighters. Uh, so who, who are they? It, there is no signature. There is no name. But uh, it's attributed to fix the country because yeah. it's supposed to be, uh, not supposed to be okay. a registered movement as such. Everybody who is active on social media, anybody who has some... Yes, this, this was issued by fix the country. The 28th. Really? Yeah, June 28th. See, yes. if it was, then here, mm. if you do a content analysis, it suggests that the motive could have been political. And this was before, this, is this the, was before the June whole 28th. world got to yes. know about what was happening to Kaka. And this is June 28th. Right. When did Kaka die? It was the same day because yes. he says, we have just received yeah, depressing the news of the I death. It was after his death. See, we have just received the pressing news of the death of our colleague and friend Ibrahim Kaka Mohammed, a hashtag face the country activist, a member of the Economic Fighters League, who was attacked by a mob 
for his fix the country related activities. You can go on, he says, mm. as you recall, we earlier reported that Kaka was attacked on the same Friday that the Ghana police service arrested other fix the country conveners. As the TV3 3 FM has reported, Kaka received voice messages of threats being made on his life. In fact, there are video recording, uh, recordings on which some persons known to be bodyguards to the municipal chief executive for Ejra could be heard saying that activities of Kaka on Facebook were making the governing new patriotic party unpopular in the area and that every means possible must be made to stop him. In fact, less than two weeks ago, various individuals had gone to report Kaka to the Jura police in order to get him to stop his work. Instead of cautioning those individuals to refrain from intimidating and threatening Kaka in the exercise of his constitutional rights as a citizen, the police rather issued a warning letter. This is also fake. That warning letter was fake. Was fake? Completely fake. I mean, you are very, you are a lawyer, and you're very experienced. Mm. See, is this the police letterhead? Did they use the coat of arms? This, this, did they use it? Okay. Coat of arms. Let's, the let's, police have a different coat of arms. the uh, camera uh, of highlight uh, this. Symbol that they use. Uh, yesterday. Let the camera highlight this. Yesterday okay, so we are being told that this is not... Some of the viewers... This is not from the police that and that it is this fake. This issue came up before the committee. I didn't watch, but okay. yeah, about he been written. But the police it is cannot use to have this. Been signed by their letterhead doesn't contain the superintendent That's not of police. I had CID it. form number. I think I have form number one zero six. Then there is a stamp. Superintendent First of, all, of no police. Name, Ghana, no reference number. Ghana police, are police are service. To this and a giraffe. Reason why? It's a lie. A giraffe. Is, is it? And the letter is. Uh, <laughs> this is the police. Superintendent of Police, Ghana mm -hmm. Police Service, mm -hmm. Ejura. This is police. This is what they use on all their forms. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So uh, let's 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 uh, have the camera come on this. Is it possible that in some of the uh, communities, a police officer or the police may have something like this and it's not use possible. it? Do we have the police coming out to deny that this came from them since it came out long ago on the 15th of June? Look, I, I checked, don't remember I checked, anything I like that. Yeah, okay. I checked with okay. the Director General mm. of the CID. Director General, okay. Yes, I sent this to him. This mm. is about 10 or some days ago. Okay. And asked him to authenticate this for me. And he came back, said, first of all, Okay, then he the would name? have checked. He would have checked with the I people asked him, there. In fact, and I even said something which I don't think they've done, that he should encourage the Asante Regional Police Command to issue a disclaimer. Mm. And they haven't done haven't this done. all this while. Yes, but, but this is a fact. All the police investigative... Could there be report. a reason they haven't done that? But this would be huge misconduct if indeed this is emanating from the police. And this is a, something that must be dealt with. Anything is possible within the police. They okay. issue all sorts of maybe, letters. Maybe, maybe, yes. Maybe, but you see, hmm. this... Why would the police want to... Why I say that is that, yes, like I said yesterday, we were discussing this issue. I said, look, I have seen it, but I can't authenticate it. And we had people who actually sent in messages to the effect that the police were confronted with this at the committee. Ah, yes, the, the committee meeting. Yes. The committee hearing. And they admitted, yes. And the police the confirmed committee that the guy was filming no. police things. And no, so that they, they wrote to him. That they, they wrote, wrote to, him. to him, yes, yes. <sighs> see. Yes. So who, who, where is the signatory? Committee meeting. I think this was where confirmed at the letter? committee meeting. No, right. what I'm saying mm. is that I get all the things you're saying about right. letterhead and all that. But it appears so, that so the let's, letter let's do it this way. has been if, confirmed if, by the police. If, if my, produ my police. production team it can, can, he, can quickly call the search through the, call the, police. the hearing with the Ejura police yes. of, and that about this particular one. They agreed they signed this. Yeah, they gave a reason. And it's on police uh, <laughs> coat of arms. Okay. It's not done. 